Welcome, welcome. We are back for part three of the Painted Canyon Crochet Along. This in the end of part two is where we sewed our shoulders together. One thing that I did not mention at the end of part two is that you need to make sure that you have the correct number of stitches at this point. So if you sewed correctly in the right number of stitches, you should have the same number of stitches as is stated on the pattern for your size. So it says that the 23T should have 11 stitches for each front here that has not been sewn so you're counting from the first stitch that does not have this yarn coming out of it so you're going to start counting here and you want to have 11 stitches on both fronts for the 2 3 t size it's different for every size and then i believe it is 12 stitches across the neck so make sure that you have your stitch count correct um, as per the size that you are making and we are ready to start on the hood. So where you have still been attached this whole time, this is my working yarn now, and this is what we are going to use to make the hood. We're just eliminating some yarn ends and the, and the need to weave in those ends. So what we're going to do is we, have, we are going to reinsert our hook in the same place as where we ended, where it told us to leave attached, right? So now we are ready to start the actual hood itself. Sorry, that's moving. All right, so now we are ready to start the actual hood itself. So in order to do that, where still attached, you're going to chain one and turn. You're going to half double crochet in as many stitches as stated. So for the two, three T size, we're going to do it in all 11 of these stitches that have not been sewn. You'll see what I mean here in a second. So I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, oops, I got too much of that stitch, seven, eight, nine, ten, and this eleventh one here, let me resituate, this eleventh one here should be the last one on the front, right? So I've got eleven for my two, three T size. Now, see this yarn right here? This is where we sewed our shoulders together. Now what we're going to do is we're going to do a half double crochet two together using this stitch where the yarn is coming out, this one right here, and this one right here. And all we're doing with this, the whole point of it, is to help stabilize the shoulder. Okay, so we're gonna do a yarn over, we're gonna insert our hook in the same one that that is coming out of, pull up a loop, now go over here to this one and pull up a loop in that one as well. Okay, so now you've got all of these loops on your hook. This might look kind of wonky. You're like, whoa, that looks really weird. And it does, but we're just gonna kind of pull it tight and leave it right where it is. So we've done a half double crochet two together. We're gonna pull it through all of these, right? Now we're going to start crocheting along the next stitches. So the next available stitch, we're going to do a half double crochet in that. And you should have as many stitches as stated for the size you are making. This one is 12. And now that's our 12th stitch. So now we're ready to do our half double crochet together using this stitch. So this is the last stitch that we sewed from the neck. And this is the first stitch that we sewed, or the last stitch, I suppose, that we sewed on the front, on that front. So I'm going to yarn over. I'm going to pull up a loop in that stitch there. And then I'm going to go all the way over here. And I'm going to pull up a loop in this one, the same one where that yarn's coming out of. Now you can kind of pull this a little bit, the yarn that you used to sew, yarn over, pull through all of the loops, and now we are ready to finish half double crocheting the other front, so all the way to that corner. There should also be 11 stitches. If you're making the two 3T size, the two fronts should be identical, and the back, of course, is the neck portion. 
So this is the first row of the hood. And I should have 36 stitches here because I'm making the 2 3 T size. Make sure that you have the correct number of stitches for whatever size you're making. Let's take a look at this. Let me pull it out just a little bit so we can lay it out and position it and we know what we're doing, all right? Okay, so here we have our neck. These are the fronts and our hood is going to go right here, right? So here's our shoulders with our armholes and we've got this awesome um, row that we just went around here where you're still choosing to leave these two yarn tails. These are what we use to sew our shoulders together. We're still choosing to leave those not attached or not fastened off or woven in or anything like that. So now for the next portion of the hood until it tells you to stop for rows 2, 3, T, I'm going to chain one and turn and just continue going around this U shape right here. I'm just going to go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth until it tells me to stop. This Now that we've done that half double crochet two together and those two stitches, you never have to do that again, ever. You're just going to go half double, half double, half double, half double, half double, all the way around and then back and then around and back and that is it. So no more of those funky stitches, nothing like that. So we're just going to go until I get to row 19 for the size that I am making. So here I finished row 19 of my hood and it doesn't matter if you're making the adult size if it's on the other side it's okay not a big deal um, got my armholes down here this is going to be my hood now I finished row 19 and for all of the sizes there are several rows at the very end of the hood where we do some decreases right in the middle and the whole point of those decreases is so that when you're wearing the hood it doesn't have this really pointy point in the back of the head so that it's more of a rounded hood than you know a, a straight 90 degree angle so what we're going to do is we're going to find the center most stitches you can either use stitch markers and physically mark them with two stitch markers or you can just count it I know that this is 36 stitches so if I have two in the middle that means that I have 34 left over so I'm going to do 17 a decrease and 17. I hope that that makes sense. For the video purpose, we will go ahead and mark these stitches. Note that you do not have to mark your stitches this way. I'm going to find the two centermost stitches since I know that there are 36 here. I'm going to find 18 and mark that. So this is the 18th from that side. And then this is going to be the 18th from the other side. So what we're going to do is we're going to half double crochet in these stitches all the way until you get up to the stitch marker. And then in these two, we're going to do a half double crochet two together, which is the same thing we did when we did the, the hood, the first row of the hood. So I'm going to go ahead and do my chain one and turn. I'm going to half double crochet all the way to the stitch markers. Now that I am at the stitch markers, I'm going to do a decrease there. So I'm going to go ahead and take these out. Like I said, you don't have to use them at all if you don't want to. Um, if you're a beginner or you're worried about counting your stitches correctly, you can absolutely use them, but again, you don't have to. So these two stitches right here are I'm going to do a yarn over. I'm going to pull up a loop. I'm just going to go straight into that next one. So I've got four, I'm gonna yarn over and pull through all four. So that is a decrease. Now, what you could do instead of marking your stitches every single row from here to eternity, <laughs> um, for the rest of the hood at least, you could just mark that decrease so that you know, okay, there's my decrease. So that when you do your next row, there it is. So now I'm just gonna decrease or do, do a half double crochet all the way down the rest of the row. And then we're going to do this row for as many rows as stated until we're done with the hood. So for me, uh, the size that I am making, the 2, 3, T size, this is row 20, and I'm going to go until I finish row 24. So I'm going to do four more rows of this. So chain one, turn. 
Now we're going to half double crochet across. We're going to place a decrease. We're just going to place them right on top of each other. And if you get off by one stitch, nobody's going to know. It's fine. <laughs> it is absolutely fine. Just make sure that you're placing those decreases on top of each other and stagger them if possible. Looking at this decrease from the back side, it looks like it was these two stitches here. These are the two that we used to do our decrease last time. So I'm going to place my decrease with this being the second stitch. I'm going to go like this and I'm going to pull up a loop in this one and I'm going to pull up a loop in this one and that's going to be my decrease for this row. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that stitch marker and I'm going to move it up to the new one there. And now I'm just going to half double crochet to the end of the row. And, and to be quite honest, if you do not want to mess with these decreases, you can have a pointy hood. It's still going to be cute. Nobody's going to care. Um, we're only talking about a handful of stitches anyway. So if you want to just eliminate these decreases, that's fine with me. I won't tell anyone. You don't even have to tell me. I will never know. <laughs> and <laughs> you'll just have a pointier hood than everyone else, which is fine. You could even put a little pom-pom on it and have a a pointy pom-pom hood, that'd be cute. So there is my row 21. Now we're going to do this again. Chain one and turn. We're going to do our half double crochets all the way and then we're going to decrease when we get to that stitch marker. All right, here we are. So just like last time, the, la the two stitches that we used to decrease last time are this one and this one. So now I'm gonna use this one and this one. Just make sure that they're all lining on top of each other nicely. So I guess suppose that works if you use the one right before the stitch marker and then the stitch marker. Move my stitch marker up. and complete the row. So then I'm going to do this same row another two times and then for the size I'm making anyway make sure you follow your size pattern that you are making and then we will be ready to sew together the top of the hood and then we will be ready to start on the pockets and the edging. You'll be amazed. Once we sew this hood together, you're going to be like, oh my goodness, it looks like a cardigan. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> so chain one and turn. We're going to do our decreased row again. And then one more after this one, I believe. All right, I am to one stitch before my stitch marker. So now I'm gonna do my decrease in these two stitches. Move my stitch marker up. And complete the row. This is my, this is my final row of the hood now. I've got my stitch right before the stitch marker and my stitch marker stitch. Beautiful. Now I can just flat out remove it since we're done doing our decreases. And I'm just going to half double crochet to the end of the row. Okay, so let's take a look at these decreases and what they did. Like they're not super, super noticeable, but you will be able to tell a slight decrease in the amount of the pointiness of the hood when you're looking at it from the side specifically. So now I have finished my hood rows. I'm going to clip my yarn. When you clip your yarn here, you wanna make sure that you leave enough yarn because we're gonna fold the hood in half and we're gonna sew it shut. So you need to make sure that you clip enough yarn in order to do that. So let me just pull a little bit here. I'd rather have a little bit too much than not enough. Go ahead and pull that through as you fasten off. Nice. All right, let's take a look at these decreases real quick. They should all line up for the most part. 
So they're looking pretty nice here, right? Looks good. Okay, let's take a little look at our cardigan. Here are our armholes, right? This is the front. This is our hood, and it is supposed to have an oversized hood, so if it looks super tall and you're like, holy moly, <laughs> it's okay. Um, and then, of course, we are ready to add the edging here in a little bit. So let's go ahead and sew up this hood top. So as you're looking at the inside of the cardigan, you're just going to fold the hood in half like this. And what we're going to do is we're going to sew the hood shut exactly the same way that we did the shoulders, right? Stitch for stitch. So let's go ahead and thread our yarn needle. And let's sew this hood shut stitch for stitch. I'm gonna find the last stitch here of the row and I'm gonna make sure that I get both sides of that V just like that find the corresponding stitch on the other side, which is this one. And now we're just gonna sew this hood shut, stitch for stitch. Remember not to pull it too tight or it will start to pucker, but you do want your stitches to be secure. You just don't want them super, super tight. So I'm just going stitch for stitch the same way we did at the shoulders from the underneath side like you're lacing a shoe. I've gotten to the end here. Some of these end stitches can be kind of funky. Uh, just make sure that you've gotten all of the loops that you could possibly get. I'm going to feed my yarn into the inside of the hood because I wanna weave in all of my ends on the inside here so that it's not blatantly obvious, right? And so I've pulled my yarn through to the inside. It should look nice and clean on the outside. See how we've got that nice um, swoopy top going looks good so now we're going to come back here and we're just going to weave in these ends nice and securely i always go three directions because i'm a little overachiever on my weaving in of the ends Especially when it comes to something like this, it's going to get washed a lot and worn a lot. Make sure those ends are nice and secure. So I've got that done. I'm going to clip my yarn. And now when you lay this out, you should have cute little shoulders, right? Got her back here. Notice I still have my yarn tails that I have not woven in back there because I told you not to, right? Here we have our hood. Ta-da! <laughs> our little hood and then this is our our front obviously and it's starting to look like the classic painted canyon cardigan look can you visualize it i hope you can so here we've got our armholes of course we've got our cute little hood that we're going to add on to we are not completely finished with that yet because we do have the edging which is coming up next and the pockets as well as far as what is left for part three. So I'm going to take a break and we will meet up together here in just a minute and start the edging together. I am going to use a different colored yarn for the edging. I'm going to use this avocado color because I love this color and I think it's going to really bring it in, uh, bring it all together as far as the edging being this opposite color. So I'll be back in just a moment and we will crochet on this edging together. Okay, now that we've got the hood sewn up, everything's ready to go with the edging. So we are going to start by inserting our hook in the bottom right corner, and that's if you were actually wearing the cardigan. So I'm going to insert my hook just in this bottom right corner. Um, it doesn't really matter where you place it, but I am gonna zoom in for this whole section so that we can see exactly where I am placing my stitches every single time. Consistency is key. All right, I'm going to insert my hook 
somewhere in around this corner. I'm just gonna go into this corner right here. We'll be able to weave in our ends later and we'll clean it up, it'll be perfectly fine. So I'm gonna insert my hook here. I am going to pull up my new yarn color. Let me find the end here. I'm using the avocado colorway um, because I love it and it's gonna be really cute for my friend's little boy. So we are attaching with new yarn. Now, um, I'm going to, if, if you're using a solid color, you can attach with any yarn that you have left over from making the hood, etc. You do not have to change colors, of course. So I'm going to do the first chain one. I'm going to half double crochet in that same spot. And now I'm going to half double crochet in the bottom of this stitch here. Do you see how this, if you turn it sideways, that is a stitch? I'm gonna go in that hole right there with a half double crochet right in that hole. And every time I come up on one of those looking stitches, every single time here and here and here, all the way around the entire thing, I'm always going to place my, my hook in the same exact spot. So now I'm going to do, I have to do a stitch in the middle, right? Because every time you see the this ridge, that's two rows. And you only want to place one stitch per row end. So if I'm going to place one every time I come up on one of these, then I have to place one somewhere in the middle here too. And we want to stay as consistent as possible. So I'm going to yarn over to make that a um, half double crochet. And for mine, I'm going to go right into both sides of the side of that stitch. So this is a stitch here, right? This is the side of that stitch. I'm inserting my hook front to back. I'm grabbing the two sides of it to make sure that we're getting a nice sturdy edging. Finish my half double crochet. Now I'm ready for the next half double that goes in the base of that stitch there, just like we just did in the other half double. Now I'm ready again to go into the middle here. So I'm gonna yarn over, I'm gonna go through both sides, okay? I'm picking up both sides of the side of that stitch, half double. I'm gonna go into the bottom of that stitch like we've been doing. Now I'm going to go into this right here in the side of this. Pick up both sides of that stitch make that a half double. Now we're going to go into the bottom right here. That one's always easy to find. It's the it's the opposite ones, the one we're doing right now. That's a little bit more difficult to to make sure you get correct. Through the side of that stitch there into the bottom of that stitch. Into the side of this stitch here. and into the bottom of that stitch. And so we're placing these pretty evenly, right? As long as it's always in the same spot. We are going to go back through with ribbed stitching. So if you notice that there's a little bit of a gapage in some of these, it's okay, because you're not gonna be able to tell. We just wanna make sure that we are placing one half double crochet per row end all the way up the entire thing and back down to this other side over here. So I'm going to continue adding these half double crochets. All right, as you can see, I have gone all the way from the bottom right corner up the whole front of the cardigan, placing them exactly in the same spot at every row end. But now you see I have made it up to the very center of the hood. And when we get to where we sewed our two pieces together for the hood to create it, we want to make sure we place one half double crochet in the middle right here because you're going to have an even number of stitches on the, on the right side and an even number of stitches on the left side. Theoretically, they should be identical. You are going to have one extra stitch here so that you end this first row of edging with an odd number of stitches. It's important that you have an odd number. If you get off by a stitch, it's fine. Just make sure you're off by two of them <laughs> so that you're on an odd number, right? So I'm going to place my middle half double crochet just right in the middle. Okay, and like I said, if it looks a little funky, it is okay because we are going to cover it up essentially with some ribbing stitches here in a moment. 
Okay, so now I'm ready to start going back down the other side. So we need to make sure that we're always placing our stitches the same way as before. We're always going to place one per row end. So you have to decide where you're going to place that and stay consistent. You do not have to do it exactly how I'm doing it. Just stay consistent and make sure that your stitch count is correct when you're done. So I'm going to go into the side of this stitch here. I want to make sure that I don't have a ginormous gap in between these. Like I said, we are going to cover it up, but you don't want to be like way over here and have like a huge hole, right? So that looks good. Went into the side of that. Now I'm going to go into the bottom of this one. Now I'm going to go to the side of this one. Now I'm going to go in the bottom of this one. side, bottom. All right, I did just stop to check to make sure that I had the correct number of stitches and the one that I just made is 138. So for this size I need to have 141 so I'm going to do 139 here, 140 here, and 141 I'm going to place in the very last space available. So I have 141 of these green stitches, which is the size 23T. Make sure that you count that you have the correct number for the size you are making. See how nice and evenly these are spaced? They look great. So now it is time to start row two of the edging. So we're going to chain one and turn. And now we're looking at the inside of the cardigan. In this very first stitch, we're going to place a regular half double crochet. And now around the next stitch, do you see how we have a hole here and a hole here that's around the actual post of the stitch itself? We are going to do what is called a back post half double crochet. So the half double tells us that we're going to wrap our hook, right? The back post portion of that stitch it tells us that we're going to come from the back side around the post of that stitch. So come from the back side from in between, this is kind of difficult if you've never done it before, but come in between those stitches from the back side and then put your hook straight back through the next hole right here so that you're pulling it to the back, right? That's why it's called back post. You're coming from the back and pulling it to the back. Now wrap or hook it. So now you've got three loops on your hook like a regular half double crochet. You're just going to finish it like a regular old half double crochet. Now we've got our next stitch, which we're going to do the same exact thing, but we're going to come from the front side. So we're alternating back post half double crochet with front post. And then we'll do a back post and a front post and a back post and a front post, and that's what gives it the ribbing. So still a half double crochet. So wrap your yarn around your hook. And now we're going to come in from the front side. So we're just going to hook this whole post right here, but we're going to come from the front side like this. These are a lot easier than the back posts, right? <laughs> so just go around the post of that stitch, pull up your loop. When you've got your three loops left, yarn over and pull through all three of them like a regular half double crochet. This is not going to look like much until we get a couple rows in. So if you're kind of freaking out about it, don't. It's okay. So now we're ready to do a back post half double crochet again. So I wrapped my yarn around my hook. I'm coming from the back side in between those stitches. I'm going to put my hook around that post there, right? We're going to yarn over, pull up a loop, and complete the half double crochet. Now we're going to do a front post. We're going to wrap our hook, go in front to back, and come out the other side, complete your half double crochet. Wrap it, come from the back side around that post, wrap it, pull up a loop, finish the half double crochet. We are going to do this all the way around the entire cardigan, all the way till we get to the other side over there. The first row of this is the worst, I promise. Once you get a few rows in, they just fly right by because there's bigger holes and it's obvious or more obvious where you're supposed to be placing them. 
So I'm just going to continue making my front post like this, half double crochet, and back post around this one. I am almost back around to where we started the edging, I'm doing my front posts, half double, and my back posts, half double. When I get to the end, the last post stitch that I do should be a back post, right? And it's around the second to last stitch. Back post, half double, and a regular old plain old half double in the last stitch. It's perfect. So that is the end of row, row <laughs> two of the edging. So now we're going to start row three. This is where it gets easier. We're going to chain one and turn. So now we're looking at the outside of the card again, again. Get all situated after my big turn here. <laughs> now I am going to place a regular half double in the top of the first stitch. The first and last stitch always just get plain old regular half double crochet. So half double in that first one. And now since we've turned this one, Sorry. Now since we've turned this one that was a back post on the last row, row is now a front post because we're looking at it from the opposite direction. So we're going to front post around the post of that stitch, half double, yarn over. We're going to put this post right here is a back post. So we're going to go around that guy as well. So now this is a back post, half double crochet. Front post around this one. Back post around that one. Front post and back post. And this is all that there is to the ribbing. We're just going to do several rows of this, however many rows you decide to do. Some of mine that I've done for myself in the adult sizes, some of them I've done a lot of rows. I've done like a really nice chunky edging on them. So if you want to continue adding rows here, you can add as many edging rows as you want. On um, some of them I did as many as 12 rows. So on some of my own, I mean. So I'm going to just continue doing this back post, front post all the way around till I get to the other side. And then we're going to start a brand new row, row four. Um, same thing. Just front post, back post all the way around. And I am finishing up row three. And the last stitch is going to be a half double crochet right in the top of that last stitch. Now we're ready for row four, same exact thing. We're just gonna go back the opposite direction. You can see that on the hood here, let me zoom back out just a little bit. You can see that on the hood here, it's starting to have that, that nice um, rounded look instead of being kind of wonky and um, without a lot of shape to it. Where's my shoulder? There it is. <laughs> Where'd my shoulder go? I can't find my shoulder. Um, so yeah, it's starting to have this really nice rounded edge to it. It's looking awesome, guys. I'm loving it. I am ready to start row four of my edging. And really all row four is is the same thing that we've already done. I'm going to chain one and turn. And I'm going to put a half double regular in the first stitch right here. And I'm just going to do my front post, back post all the way around. This is the end of my row four of my edging and for the two three t size that means i am almost done with my edging so i've got my back post and then my regular half double in the top of the last stitch 
Sweet, that is the end of row four. Now I am ready to start my final row of the edging. Remember, if you're making a different size, make sure that you have enough stitch or enough rows there for your edging portion. So now for row five, I've done my turn. I'm going to do a chain one, and all I'm going to do is I'm gonna single crochet all the way around. When I get to the other side, we're also gonna single crochet around the bottom so that we end up right back here. So we're gonna go up, around. When we get to the other side, we're gonna go around the bottom, and then we're gonna end up exactly where we are right now. And then we will be done with the edging. All right, I have gotten all the way around with my single crochets. So this is my final row, row five of the two, three T. Now you notice that, let me move this. You notice that some of this looks a little wonky. You're like, meh, it looks kind of meh, right? So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do one single crochet row around the whole bottom piece of the cardigan uh, just to kind of clean up these edges a little bit. So in order to start your single crochet around the bottom edge of your cardigan, you're gonna place a total of three single crochets in that last stitch. So this is the same stitch that I did um, as my last stitch of round or row five. I'm gonna put two more there so that I have a total of three. And now I'm going to evenly, or as evenly as I can, single crochet up these up the ends of this here. Now once I get here, we're golden because these are all like perfectly shaped little stitches, right? We just have to get to that point. So single crochet evenly across. See how this one, It's we're looking at the side of a stitch here. I'm just gonna go into that hole like we did on the side of the edging. Use those natural holes to your advantage when you're crocheting into the edging of row ends. All right, so now doesn't that look a lot better than the whole wonkiness we had going on? Now I'm just going to single crochet all the way around. Let me see, let me flip this. I'm gonna single crochet all the way around the entire piece. And then when I get over here, I'm gonna single crochet up these row ends. It's holding a little bit because that's where I touched my yarn. But when I single crochet all the way back here, I'm gonna go evenly up this side and I'm gonna end right here. And then we'll be, we will be completely finished with the edging of the Painted Candy Cardigan. So I'm going to continue my single crochets, which hopefully you know how to do if you are at this point of the crochet along. So I'm just gonna single crochet all the way around. When we get done with the edging, all we have left for part three is to crochet the pockets. And then in part four, we will finish, we will do the sleeves, do all of the finishing, um, tie or weave in all of our ends. And I'm gonna show you how I do that strategically to make sure they look more professional. And then we're going to sew on those pockets that we're getting ready to make. So exciting, I'll see you guys in just a minute. Look at this adorable little painted canyon cardi, and I just love this pattern so much. So we've got our cutesy, doesn't it look tiny when you lift up the hood? We've got this cute little hood going, right? And then it swoops out beautifully. We've got our nice edging, single crochet edging around the bottom. I have not woven in these ends yet because I wanna do that with you um, when we do our finishing in part four. So I'm just gonna leave these hanging out just like they are. For the last portion of part three of this crochet along, we are ready to make the pockets that we will sew on in part four. So I'm gonna take my cardigan and move it out of the way. Okay, here I've already worked up one of my pockets. I do have extra yarn tails because I changed colors in the middle there. So I am going to work up a very quick pocket here with you. There are pockets for the six month and 12 month sizes are non-existent because they're so little we don't need pockets for that size. So definitely follow the pattern that you are making. For the two, three T, I'm going to start with a chain of 12. Going to half double crochet in the second chain from the hook and all the way across. I'm 
there's my first row of my pocket. Now I'm just going to go until I have eight rows total for this size and straight up half double crochet. Since I am doing a different color for my um, edging on my pockets, I'm going to switch to that color at the end of um, so that I can do the last row of full half double crochet in the new color. It makes the edging look nicer in my opinion. So I'm going to finish the eighth row of my pocket with the new color. Now I'm going to do a chain one. This is the first part row of ribbing. Half double crochet in the first, front post around the next, back post around the next. So we're going to do this just like we did the edging. And I'm going to add a couple of rows here, and then we're going to do a single crochet around the whole entire piece. If you are using a solid color for your pockets, you are going to have a much easier time than I, <laughs> but of course I have to make it difficult for myself, right? End with the front post, and then a regular plain up, straight up, half double crochet in the last stitch. Now I'm going to chain one and turn, straight up half double crochet in the first, back post around this one, front post, back post, all the way to the end, When I get to the end, I'm going to place that half double crochet in the top of the last stitch. And those are my ribbing rows. I'm only doing two ribbing rows for the pocket on this size. So now I'm going to chain one and turn. I'm going to single crochet across. And if you are doing a solid color pocket, you're just going to single crochet all the way around the entire pocket. When I get to a corner, I'm going to place three single crochets in a corner. So this corner right here, I'm going to go one, two, three. And now I'm ready to start working down my row ends. Since I have a different color here, I'm just going to go here, here, here. And then I'm going to go ahead and use my other yarn and pick that up to change the color back to gray. I'm going to go ahead and clip this. All right. There we go. So now I've got my single color back, right? I'm just going to continue single crocheting all the way around the pocket. And the, the reason that we do that is because it, it gives it that really nice edge to where when you single crochet all the way around it, it's going to look so much better when we sew that on. So finish single crocheting all the way around your pocket, fasten off, leaving long enough tails so that we can use these long tails from the pocket, from the pocket that we sew to the cardigan. We're going to use the actual yarn tail left over. So finish up your pockets. I will see you next week for part four where we will sew these on and finish the hood weave in all of our ends and make it look as awesome as possible. So I enjoyed part three. We will work together next week for part four. Thanks for watching.